Hi everyone, welcome to another um, video in this um, World of Flowers Skull series. Um, my aim today is to colour the flowers, the teeth and do a little bit of a fun background with some um, soft pastels. I'm going to be doing the leaves in my Black Widow Scorpion set. I think we'll have enough colours from just the scorpion set we may use some other black widows as well but we'll see how it goes i'm thinking the scorpion is probably going to get us there so i'm going to um come in closer so we can start there are other videos showing all of the other parts of the skull so if you have missed those you can watch this one and color along though you might want to leave the background until you've seen and done all the rest of the skull I'm going to start with the charcoal green colour. Now we've done the top part of the um, skull in a very light application of colour compared with the face which is much darker. So I'm going to continue with that light theme on these. So although I want to um, have a little bit more colour near to the stems of the leaves, I'm going to keep with a light on pressure so that I think it would look very strange if we had very dark um, intensely coloured leaves with the lighter coloured flowers so we're just going to keep it pale and it should work I think maybe one of the colours isn't going to yeah it might probably be okay um, but, uh, so I'm going to do, so those are this colour. Now we use this colour down here and we've got this bit here. Now I think this is a leaf and I'm just going to colour it. And this needs a darker um, colour to sort of match those. So I'm going to pop that there. And I'm going to do another one this colour over here. Um, these two leaves here. So although we've got a lot of grains, um, there's a lot of leaves, so I'm just sort of using the colours on more than one leaf. We could mix the colours up like we have done on some of the flowers, but I think um, they're quite nice just being as they are. I'm not sure what that is there. I'm going to colour it as a bit of leaf. I don't really know. Like that it is it's actually it's probably that start stem isn't it but never mind I've colored it now okay so that is that green I'm gonna now use the olive green it's a really pretty um, shade but quite vibrant and I'm gonna do this leaf here to start with so I'm gonna be careful with this one because it is a vibrant green I don't want to press too hard it's better to build the layers up slowly and gently than to accidentally get too much colour down. You can erase. They erase a little but they will stain and leave some marks behind. So that's that one and I'm going to do this leaf up here as well. I'm trying to do it evenly so a little bit each side. Um, it's not natural for it to be random really but then this is a made up item is not supposed to be like it's it's not um, a skull like this wouldn't be growing in the garden so if someone has put together the flowers so maybe they would sort of even it out a bit that's a little bit dark I think I'm gonna grab my eraser this is my Tombow Mono just erase there that's better it might I'm being fussy but I feel happier with that now we have our grass green. Now this is quite a dark green as well, so I'm going to have to be careful. I'm going to do it around this little one here. And again, I'm going to press ever so gently. Hardly want to breathe. You definitely don't want to sneeze. <laughs> really light. I'm just trying to do a little more near the flower, but I don't want to press too hard. I 
we're going to do all of the leaves around this flower the same colour. I think they would be, wouldn't they? There we go. And should we do some elsewhere? Yeah, we'll do a bit over here on this one. Again, I want the centre part to be a little bit darker, but not um, not too dark. So, very gentle touch and just a couple of layers. Because normally I would do a lot of layers of these um, today, just gentle. Now we're going to have to be careful with our background because we've got such a gentle layer that if we do too much if we get too close with the soft pastel, which is what I'm going to use, it will go over the top and it will change the colour of the pencil. If you press hard with your pencils then and then use a pastel colour, a soft pastel, it, um, Irish green, it would almost be so burnished that the pastel will sort of be, um, I can't think of the word, it won't stick, you know. It will be re rejected. That's not the right word. I can't think of the word by the um, by the pencil. But here we haven't got that, as so we've used very light layers to be very careful about the um, pastel. But if you go slowly, you should be able to do okay. You may decide you don't want a background anyway. You don't have to put them in. Some pictures look better without. To be honest. So it just depends. I feel like I want to do one. So I am going to, but you know, you might like it as is. I still haven't decided what I'm doing for the teeth, by the way. So uh, that's going to be a surprise to me as well as you. <laughs> I have done them gold in previous um, times I've done this page, but I'm not sure. Um, we have the um, Grub Green. I just love that name. <laughs> I'm going to do all of those in this one. And I've been very impressed with this set of pencils. When I received my Cobra set, I had one that was slightly broken. And they had been sent to me from America, though. This set, um, I think, came from the UK. And we've had no breakages. This one's got a big chip in the lead. But um, it hasn't, I can still colour with it and uh, it's fine. So uh, I think some, I've never received a set of pencils where everyone has been absolutely completely perfect. I remember when I got my full set of 120 polychromos, one of them had broken wood. And I bought them off Amazon, just sorry, I've got to wipe my nose. And um, I wrote to them and said, this one's got a split in the wood, very near the bottom of the pencil. Um, and they said, and I said, can you send me a replacement pencil? Because it will mean that I can't use the whole pencil. Because when I get to that split, lime root, um, it will break. And they said, um, we'll replace the whole, we'll send you a whole new set. You can keep those. I was like, you what? This is a polychromos pencils. But actually, no, they no, that's not what they said. They said, return them and then we'll replace, you send you a brand new set. And I said, no, no, that seems such a waste. All the others are perfect. So I don't think I want to return them. I just want a replacement. They said, well, we don't have, we can't replace just one pencil. I'm going to have to come out because I can't push my book too far up to show you the teeth. So um, in the end they sent me a small refund which covered the cost of replacing that one pencil which was brilliant. Teeth, teeth, teeth. What should we do? Now teeth are normally white but our skull is going to be white. I could colour the skull grey and leave the teeth white but I don't think I want to do that. I'm wondering, I quite fancy the idea of doing them pink and I'm just going to try it. Watch, decide whether it's for you. So this is the pig's ear colour and I'm going to colour the whole tooth in a hard layer of pink. I think it, I, I want them to look more friendly 
and I'm hoping that using a nice pinky colour will make um, our skull look more friendly. We'll see if it works because I can't visualise, I've got no idea what it's going to look like. So I'd be just as interested as you to see if it looks okay. I mean, it's a bit of a risk because pink is a sort of gummy colour, so I don't know if it will look a bit weird, but so far I'm thinking I'm okay with it. I will zoom the camera out when I'm done so you can see it in the context of the whole skull, so before you make up your mind as to uh, whether you think it works. You could just leave them gold, I, um, I mean white, um, I like them gold, with a gold pen, it's always quite fun. But they uh, then end, I don't think it would match this colour palette at all, so I wouldn't do it this time. Now the little bits above each tooth is a sort of like a gummy bit, I'm not sure, because skulls don't have a gum, they, you know, I don't know what keeps the teeth in to be honest, I think they just slot into the bone. Um, so uh, I think I'm going to do that in a purple, just to keep on with this sort of pinky purple theme. Oh, there's a moth in here, hang on. I just got rid of it. So I'm going to use the pastel purple, which is rather pretty, to do this bit above. It's a nice colour, isn't it? Now I had thought for my background I was going to do a sort of black or grey pastel to uh, for the sort of uh, like a sort of atmospheric background, but I've decided that I want to keep it pretty and light, so I'm not. I'm going to do a different colour pastel background, but I need to be careful not to get any on the main skull. I want that to look white. So there we go, there's the teeth, and I, as I promised, I will zoom out for you. I need to zoom out to do the background anyway. And you can see, I those look extra pale because of my lamp. If I turn my lamp off for a minute, you can see how that they are pale, but not completely. I'm going to put the lamp back on, um, just in case we need it, because the sun's going in and out. So these are my soft pastels. Um, you can use any brand. I'm just going to move my pencils out of the way. That's the wrong box. There we go. So let's open up and choose a colour or two. Let's take off the lid and the protective bits and pieces. Doesn't want to come off. So what I ideally want is I'm thinking to go along the pink and purple line so I'm just grabbing a cloth I've got one here that's hmm, that one's quite stained but it is clean um, now we've got that pink is quite nice but it's quite vibrant that one's very neony but it's more of a cooler colour um, I think I might do this one, this pink, and then I might do a bit of purple as well, but I shall decide once I put the pink down. So I'm just going to actually take some of that pink and rub it on another piece of paper. Look at it on there. But I think it's going to work. I'm going to be daring and try it. Now you want to make sure that everything around here is protected. It's going to go off the edge of the page probably so you want to make sure you've got a piece of paper behind that covers the whole edges. You don't want it getting all over the edges of your book. And you can see look it's not as mad as it looked on the on the cloth. Now when you're using pastel your fingerprints will show up in the pastel. So you need to be a bit careful. I will hold it here so that my fingers aren't near 
where I am trying to apply my colour. Whoops, move that brush out of the way. So I rub my cloth up and down on the little piece of pastel stick. And some people will, I used to do this method where I would run a knife across the pastel, scrape it onto the page. It doesn't make a very pleasant noise um, on a video, this sort of scratching noise, but also um, it makes a big mess. And uh, I, uh, I'm a messy enough person as it is. You can see how messy that is if you're, whoops, if you can, I don't know how well you can see. I'm leaving a bit of an edge around a lot of this so that we don't get any pink on the white skull. I'm going in a bit, but I'm going to, my plan is that I'm going to make this edge bit a lot darker anyway. So I'm going to do some darker colours in a bit. So I'm really just getting a base down. I don't want to go on to the next page. You could cover that with paper as well. I haven't done that, so I'm just going to be careful. I'm just going to leave a little a little white edge along. I don't think it matters. I think this is quite a pretty pink. I don't know how well you can see it. I'm sure you can see that there is a pink colour. It's quite tricky in this light. Um, half sunlight, half lamp going on, sorry. Now the more you rub and the more colour you put down, the more intense it will be and the more even it will be. So if you want a really even colour, you have to keep really going at it. But um, sometimes I feel like having a slightly less even colour actually looks better. And that's what I'm going for this time. I'm not worrying too much about it being really even. I just want to make sure there's some everywhere, really, which is what I'm doing. And now I'm going to use a, a darker colour pink. So if you look at my tray, the one next to that's the one I was using. The one next to it is significantly darker. And I'm going to grab a bit of that and just do it sort of in the corner area. like this, it's a bit darker. I think it can look fun. Now I'm going off the edge onto the paper that's behind and it's perfectly fine. I will throw that away, well, put it in the recycling when I'm done. And I think we could have done this with the grey, to make a sort of atmospheric grey look but I am pretty happy with the pink being much more positive and nice there you go rather than a sort of scary grey I don't like scary things and I know a lot of people um, don't like colouring this skull at all because they think it's too um, not nice I don't mind doing it as long as it's in a positive way that makes sense. Now there we've got a really dark patch which I really dislike. Tombow Mono Eraser. Rub, rub, rub. Rub it back. Okay, get the brush. Brush it off, get the sponge, blend it all back in. Whoops, I'll we'll have to persevere a bit with this. Now I'm going to try, there we go. I'm going to leave that pretty, I think that corner needs to be a little bit darker, but then I'm just going to do one final touch in a minute. Right, once I finish fiddling, I'm just going to find a piece of paper to lean on. I happen to have a piece here. This um, set of pens, which I showed you earlier, um, in an earlier video it might have been, um, I'm going to take this one. This is a metallic, um, lovely 
uh, a metallic silver and what I'm going to do is use it around the edge of our skull just all the way around the edge you don't have to do this final step I just think it's quite fun gorgeous pens I've actually got no silver pens at all at the minute don't think oh, I might have a castle but I was doing some I wanted one the other day and I didn't have one so this will be very welcome particularly um, now I've got to do that side and that's a bit awkward I don't put the piece of paper on the top of the bit I did already I know I'll make the piece of paper thinner like that and it can avoid being on there that's it and we'll lean there very awkward, I should have done this side first. You could do this with the glitter as well if you wanted. In fact, you could do the whole of the white skull with a see-through glitter pen. I'm tempted, but because I'm putting this on now and it's going to be wet, I won't. Struggling to uh, get it straight. There we go. So there is our finished skull. Let's take that piece of paper out. You can see what happens to it. That will be, um, as I say, that will be recycled. But uh, there is the skull. So it's up to you. Sorry, wrestling. It's up to you, as I said, if you do the background or not. Um, you might decide just to leave it white. As well as the silver line, you probably can't really see it. You might be able to see if I do that. I don't know. But um, I'm rather pleased with how friendly she looks. Um, I I think that's nice and yes you could do black behind the eyes and in the nose but I want to leave it looking really positive friendly and pretty so that's me so thank you for watching um, through the series um, I've had lovely fun playing with my new pencils so thank you so much for um, the love to the lovely person who sent me those that's really really kind and also for these which are gorgeous gorgeous so that's going to be great fun. I'm going to use these a lot, I know. These are going to be, I know I've got some other metallic jelly rolls, but these um, these are going to be the colours I use most, so that's brilliant. And uh, so there we go. So thank you for watching, as I said. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and come back tomorrow for something completely different. Happy colouring!